Hey gang, welcome back to another Trading Edge video. Today, we're gonna take a look at counter trend trading. We're gonna talk about the psychology behind it, and of course, take a look at a few examples on the charts as well. But I guess first and foremost, if you are new, I'm horrible at introductions if you can't tell, my name is Akil Stokes. I'm a former struggling trader. I am now a consistently profitable trader. I am also a trading coach over at tier1trading.com where I help others achieve the same goal. If you like free stuff, I've got tons of it all over the internet starting here on my YouTube channel. So make sure you subscribe, but also check me out on other social media platforms as well, such as the Twitter, such as Facebook and Instagram. And of course, if you're looking to take your trading to the next level, I do have training courses. We actually have an open enrollment deal going on right now that ends at the end of April. I'm not gonna sell you on it, but if you're interested in saving some money, click the link below this video and you can learn all about it. Now, let's talk about counter trend trading. Uh, for you guys that are new, counter trend trading is basically going against the grain. I know that many new traders, me as well, when you first learn about trading, everyone kind of, really uh, hypnotizes you underneath this theory that the trend is your friend. The trend is your friend. The trend is your friend. You must go with the trend. And there's nothing wrong with doing that. However, there's also a part that is being left out, right? The trend is your friend until it ends. Um, there's also the fact that, especially in the Forex market, uh, these pairs only tend to trend about 30% of the time. Now, it doesn't matter whether you want to be a trend trader or a counter trend trader. You can be massively successful doing both. But I just want you to understand that it, it, there's no one correct way to trade. It's really, really based off what's your personality. And I know one of the things that attracted me to counter trend trading was really the lack of discipline that I had early on in my trading career. I mentioned uh, a little bit ago that I was a struggling trader. Oh boy, was I a struggling trader for a very, very long time. And one of the things that I struggled with was the psychological elements of trading, uh, meaning not necessarily finding trading opportunities, but staying in those trading opportunities. And as a trend trader, you typically have to stay in those trend, uh, those trading opportunities for longer durations in order to really maximize your profit. And of course, the longer you stay inside a trade, you see the money, you think the money's yours, you see the market give a little or take a little bit back from you, you start getting scared and if you're like many traders, you end up making a mistake. And, and I was a consistent mistake maker. So I really flocked towards the counter trend trading style because it allowed me to get in and out. It was really short, quick trades where I was looking for the market to give me a little bit of relief. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. But it was really one of those situations where I can get in, I can get out really before I would sabotage my sh uh, myself. And it just felt a lot more comfortable for me. Now, um, Obviously, I have evolved since I started trading back in 2007. Wow, it's been so long now. Um, so I do take trend trading situations as well, but my underlying philosophy on, on, on the markets is counter trend trading. So even when I involve myself in trend continuation setups, I do so with a counter trend approach, but we won't get into that right now. So what I wanna do today is look at the charts. I wanna to explain to you, I wanna take a look at a few counter trend trading opportunities involving structure. And I wanna to explain to you the psychology behind it. So let's head on over. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So what we're looking at here is the pound dollar on the daily chart. And if you guys are tier one members, this is gonna be a little bit of a review. Uh, by the way, if this is your first time joining me, the Trading Edge is a daily video that we put out to our trading members. However, on the weekend, I, I like to upload a, a public one as well. This is something that I've been doing for years. It's kind of my way of, of giving back and staying in touch with uh, people that aren't able to afford uh, the education. And, uh, you know, it's a tradition that I believe in and something that I want to keep up. Um, with that being said, I've got a, a little bit of an announcement at the end of this video that <laughs> might uh, <laughs> contradict that a little bit, but I'll save that for later. Um, but just, just to give you guys a brief recap, right? We've seen a lot of strength in the pound uh, recently, right? There've been talks about the Bank of Engl England doing rate hikes and becoming more and more aggressive with them. And um, for the last, I think, week or so, we've seen a lot of strength in the pound pairs. Well, what happened later last week, I think it was around Thursday, is we got sort of an opposite message from Carney, right? Carney came out and said, hey, we, we're still gonna, you know, we still plan on hiking rates. However, because the economic news that has recently come out hasn't been as strong as we'd like to see it, we're going to kind of put a little wait and see type of feel on there. And what that did was 
it, uh, it caused a lot of weakness in the pound. It typically, and I'm not a fundamental trader, but I under, uh, not a fundamental trader, but I understand how fundamentals work. And when you see the fundamentals affect the market, it's typically when there is a deviation in what the market expects and what's coming out. Right. So if the market expects, uh, you know, a strong pound and, you know, strong news comes out, it doesn't really move that much because it's already been priced in. When you tend to see these big moves in the market is when the market believes in one thing and then the exact opposite comes out. And now it's like, oh, oh, time to kind of reposition things. So we had that happen with the pound. And then later on, on Friday, we had um, one of our, our U.S. Uh, FOMC members. I forgot who. There's so many of them. Uh, one of them came out and said, uh, basically, um, they can see continued a continued rate hike cycle for the dollar as well, which gave the dollar a little bit strength. So you have a combination of pound weakness, dollar strength. Um, no doubt we saw, or no surprise, that we saw four bull, uh, bearish excuse me, days in a row. And what we talked about in the previous video was where could we look for the move to end? And you can see that my notes are still here in the chart. This was the first level of structure that we were anticipating. Now, this isn't the main level of structure. The main level of structure, as far as the integrity of the overall trend is gonna be down here. But you can see this is the next level of structure um, that I would expect some relief to occur in the market. And we teach rules on how to identify a trend and, and that's why technically the integrity of the trend isn't broken. But this is what I call an obvious outside return, right? We've had an we've had a, an impulse leg, right? So a clear bullish leg here, and then we put in a retracement down to this level before putting in another extension. I call this an outside return. You can call it a pullback, a retracement, doesn't matter. Whatever terminology you want to use. The point is, this is our most recent level of structure. Even if we kind of drag this box out to the left. We can see that price has respected this level in the past as well. Just take a look at this. We can see price ran to this level as support, support right there. We got on the other side of it, found resistance, resistance, resistance right here. We found resistance, resistance right here. And then, of course, we found a recent support, a little bit of resistance right here as well. Let's just drag it over. Boom. Right. We found recent support here as well. So typically these levels are respected. And what I mean by respected is we see, I guess as a counter trend trader, let's put it this way, I'd be looking for some relief at this level. And what I mean by relief for you guys that are new is essentially I'm looking for the bearish move to run out of steam. And for two reasons, this level is important because we have both parties, I would expect, and we never know what's going to happen. I would expect both sides of the market to be interested at this level. I would expect buyers like myself to be interested at this level because this is a previous level of structure support where the, the, uh, the bullish move was supported. I would also expect sellers to be interested at this level as well as a place to take potential profits. And one of the, I guess, methods that I teach traders, uh, especially when taking targets and profits, because I, I often notice that a lot of traders don't have a problem identifying good trading opportunities, but they're way off as far as where to put stop losses and where to put targets. And, you know, it takes all three entry stops and targets to be a successful trader. Again, it takes all three entry stops and targets to be a successful trader. One more time, it takes all three entries, stops and targets to become a successful trader. And when one is lacking, right, it's going to hurt the entire process. So. I like teaching a thought process that says think like the other trader. And let's imagine, right, you are that super internet trader that caught the move right here, right? You caught the very top of the move and you sold at this level, right? The question I would ask is, okay, so if you're selling at this level, where are you likely to take profits at? I know if I were to sell at this level, I would take profits off right here, right? There's no reason to expect a full reversal at this moment. But even if I did, partial profits would come off at this level because this is the first level of danger. So what you have is this, and I'll, I'll this is something we go in a little bit more in depth with in the course, but let's just do a, a brief example here, right? So we have sellers that got involved at this level. Do it in all caps, right? Sellers got involved at this level, right? They made a lot of profit. They posted a lot of Instagram pictures on the way down. And if they're looking to get out at this level, what do they have to do? And this is kind of, again, just stock investment, the, the markets. This is the general principle of the basics of how it works. Um, for you guys that just signed up for the course, you can find an explanation of this in um, the price action course, the foundation series. You can check that out. But if, you're, if sellers are looking to get out at this level, 
Well, they are going to be looking to buy, right? If you sold in order to take your profits, you have to become a buyer, right? And this is where I said both parties are interested, right? And as I mentioned before, I would expect some buyers to be interested at this level as well because it's a previous level of support. So you have buyers that are interested in buying. You have sellers that are interested in buying. The flood of buying orders is going to come in at a faster rate than the, the flood of selling orders. Now, there's not more buyers than sellers. It has to be equal. But again, I want to make this as simple as possible because I know a lot of new traders are watching this. Um, the speed in which those buying orders are coming in at a faster level than the selling orders, which is going to push price up. Right. So this is one of the one of the reasons I like these levels for counter trend trading. And that's what we're, that's what I mean when I say we're looking for levels of relief. So we're looking for price action to make its way down into this level. And then we're looking for a little bit of relief. Right. A short, quick move. Again, we're not looking for a full extension up all the way here. Looking for a short, quick move to the, the next projected target level. And then I'm looking to get out. Right. Who knows? You know, the sellers may find this level to be cheap enough once again to get involved and boom, crush the markets. I don't. I don't know, um, but this is one of the reasons that a lot of traders get into trouble because they're very good at identifying this level, but then they just get a little bit too greedy with target taking, not knowing what type of trade situation they're being in. They, they, they treat every trading situation like a trend continuation trade where they, they need that home run trade, right? My theory or my philosophy is this, right? Hit singles, hit doubles, right? A little bit of profit here, a little bit of profit there consistently. And then every once in a while when the markets line up, right? When all the stars and the moons align, then you shoot for that home run trade and really take your equity curve to the next level. So that's a little bit about the psychology of a, a counter trend trade. Um, there's a few other examples as well. We saw New Zealand dollar. This was a pair we talked about in last week's uh, YouTube version of the Trading Edge video where we saw this rising wedge right here. Uh, probably go to the four hour. Rising wedge right here. We broke out of that rising wedge and we're coming down to a previous level of structure. Um, this one's a little interesting because we have two levels. Typically, the, the lower level is what's going to be more important to me. But we've got structure all the way down here. So this is one that you can put on your radar for the, the week ahead as well as a potential buying opportunity as we get to the, the lower ends of this consolidation. Really, this bigger, you can look at this as being a bull flag, right? And then Aussie dollar is the same way where we will see if I can find my Aussie. Same way, we have a bigger advanced pattern formation setting up for you guys that are pattern traders. We're not gonna talk about that today because I try to keep this, uh, this video one subject at a time to ease confusion. But you can see Aussie dollar as well. We broke out out of a little, a little uh, bit of consolidation here and then we rallied right back down to that level of structure. So counter trend traders, decent trading opportunity here as well. Now. Um, I mentioned earlier about uh, an open enrollment period. Um, what that is is basically we're, we're having a period with our courses where we're give off, giving a little bit of uh, discounts, right? There's a link below if you're interested in that. It ends in April. Now, I expect a flood of new traders to sign up for that. And when that happens, we typically get a lot busier. And I say that because newer traders come in, they're all excited, they, they watch a lot of stuff, they have a lot of questions. So there's more time being spent answering questions, uh, creating Q&A sessions and stuff like that. And when that happens, right, we all know how time works. I have to take time from somewhere in order to make time for that. And unfortunately, YouTube is going to be uh, what takes the hit. So you may not see a YouTube video from me for the next um, few weeks or so. Usually the first two, three weeks is when these traders kind of get everything off their chest and they kind of settle in once they kind of get acclimated to everything. So if you don't see a YouTube video from me for the next three weeks, uh, don't fear. I haven't gone away. I'm still here, right? People, if I don't show up for a week, people think I've disappeared. Um, I've just gotten a lot of busy um, with the educational side of things. So I will be back at some point. Don't get me wrong, but wanted to give you guys a heads up so you don't freak out. Um, I still plan on doing the Trading Coach podcast, so I'll still upload those, uh, those uh, episodes to YouTube as well as so you can check them out. Just none of the, the trading edge videos for a little bit. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope that made the, the philosophy behind counter trend trading a little bit clearer to you and kind of not just the how, but the, the why it happens. I think that's very important in trading to understand the psychology behind the moves because really trading is all about psychology, right? The, the chart is nothing more than a visual representation of all of the market's participants and all of the market's participants are humans 
or robots programmed by humans. Um, <laughs> but as far as the human ones go, there's a lot of uh, a lot of decisions are based off, based off of emotions, greed and fear, greed and fear, all that fun stuff. Um, speaking of which, the next podcast episode coming out is going to talk about the pain and pleasure principles and why we sabotage our trading. So make sure you check that out it's on basically all the podcast apps and sites. It's going to be a good one. So until next time, traders, plan your trade, trade your plan. I wish you the best of luck in the markets this week. Um, April started off pretty rough for me, but I turned it around next week. We're going to see if I can dig myself out of uh, the drawdown that I started with and end with a positive month. And uh, I hope you guys, or I wish you guys the same. I know a few of you guys are in drawdowns as well. Just, you know, you know how drawdowns work, right? You got to grit your teeth, got to bear down and, uh, you know, fight through it. And that's going to separate the successful traders from the, unfortunately, the struggling traders. So wish you guys the best and I'll see you guys next time.